you may have noticed that we haven't yet talked about any intervals that are larger than an octave in length. Intervals that are larger than an octave we call compound intervals, and we treat them kind of as an extension of the intervals that we find between the unison and the octave. And I'd like to give you maybe an intuitive way of, of thinking about that and understanding that. And let's start actually by, by writing an interval here. Um, let me start on C and write interval that ends on the E that is one octave above. So here's an E, I'm sorry, here's a C and here's an E. Let me play those two notes separately and then together. Now, if I were to count up from C, and let me start, we're starting on C down here. Um, we'll, we'll say that that's middle C. And if I were to count up, I would have C1, D2, E3, F4, G5, A6, B7, C8, D9, and E10. So according to our rule, this should be, and it actually is, the interval of a tenth. Let's take another one. Um, let's take a an F. I'm sorry, no, let's take a D and an A that's an octave more than an octave above that. So again, if I start on D and I want to end up on the A up here, more than an octave above, I would go D1, E2, F3, G4, A5, B6, C7, D8, E9, F10, G11, A12. And this should be the octave of a twelfth. And we could leave it there, because uh, that actually works. That's actually the correct answer. But more often than not, the way that we think about intervals that are compound intervals are as a combination of an octave plus an interval. For instance, the tenth C to E that I just wrote there. That really, that interval C to E, in, in the sound of it, there's not really much of a difference between going from middle C and the E right above it than there is from going to middle C and the E an octave above. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Even though that second E is higher, it still gives us the same basic sort of harmonic sound. And we want to recognize that in the way that we think about these intervals. So, so usually what we do is we think about a compound interval as being an octave plus another interval. So for instance, a tenth we think about as being an octave, C to C, plus a third, C to E. So an octave plus a third. And that makes sense. Because we start on the C, we go up an octave, then we go up to that E, which is just a third. So we think about that, that tenth as really being just sort of an overextended version of a third. And again, just because of the way it sounds, because of the way we think about it, that makes intuitive sense to us. Um, same thing with, say, a twelfth. A twelfth is simply an octave, D to D, plus a fifth. It's just an octave plus a fifth. And again, that makes intuitive sense to us because the sound of a fifth, the fifth has its own distinct sound. And even if we move that A up an octave, we still have that same basic harmonic sound. And we want to recognize this. So we call the, we call the, or we think about the twelfth as being an octave plus a fifth. Um, notice, by the way, this ends up with some kind of funny interval math. Um, because an octave plus a third, eight plus three, 
does not equal 11 as it would in the math, math as we think of it every day, an octave plus a third actually ends up being a tenth. 8 plus 5 does not equal 13 like we would expect it to happen, uh, expect it to be in, in everyday life. 8 plus 5 actually equals a twelfth. An octave plus a fifth equals a twelfth. And for the really nerdy am amongst you, that's that's because we sort of are counting this this middle note twice. We're counting that C twice. We're counting C D E F G A B C. Then we count it again to make the next interval C D E. So the actual name of the or the number of the compound interval is always going to be one less than what we would get if we added up using arithmetic the actual uh, the actual numbers of the intervals. Now you may say this is this is incredibly mathematical and abstract and and I'm never ever going to use it. Um, but it turns out we use this all the time in in jazz and popular music when we write chord symbols. We'll be learning about chord symbols and lead sheets uh, in an upcoming video later on. Um, but you may see a symbol like this. You may see a symbol like A7 flat 13, which tells you to play an A7 chord with a flat 13th. You may say, oh my gosh, what's a flat 13th? Well, flat 13th. 13th is simply uh, a sixth, what we call a sixth when we, when we build chords. If this is going a little bit beyond where you feel like you are right now, that's okay. Um, we'll come back to this a little bit later in the semester and, and, and break it down. But I just wanted to give you a sense that this is actually um, a practical skill that you will use in real life at some point. Compound intervals.